So today we're going to be chain plying our singles that we have spun up from our braid. The chain plying is also known as Navajo plying. Um, basically it's taking a single or single ply and creating a, a three ply yarn and it's kind of like crocheting in a way where there's a lot of loops and pulling through but what it does is it keeps your colors in the in the order that you spun them. So instead of getting barber poles and things when you do a two ply from two different bobbins, this is all on one bobbin and I have it on a lazy Kate and we're just gonna um, chain ply. <laughs> and we'll show you how to do it and how to get started. So now we're gonna chain ply. An important thing to do when you start is have your leader be looped so you can tie your uh, single into it because we're gonna need to make another loop to start the chain ply. So I have fed it through my orifice, I have my loop here and my leader, and you wanna gently tie a knot with your spun single and make a, leave a big enough loop that you can fit your hand through it because you're gonna have to do that. And, but you need to be gentle so your fiber doesn't just fall apart. Okay, so we have a knot. So basically we have a loop in a loop right now. So here's our spun single and our leader and it's looped. So now we're gonna start spinning. So first thing you need to do is put your hand through the second loop or the, the loop that you made with your single. And then we're gonna go the opposite direction than how you spun. So anytime you are plying or doing any kind of um, combining of yarns, chain plying, just regular plying, you wanna go the opposite direction in the way than the way you spun your single. So I spun mine going clockwise, so I'm gonna ply going counterclockwise. Okay. So I got some twist built up. So the first thing you do is you pull your single through the loop and create another loop. So you're always gonna have a loop. And whether you're right-handed or left-handed, I'm right-handed, so the loop is in my uh, weaker hand. Um, and then you can, pl you can continue to treadle while you're plying, or but when you're just starting, you kinda wanna go slow. So what I'm gonna do is make a few chains. So all we're doing now is basically creating our ply. Can you see it? <laughs> okay. So once you've got an arm's length enough yarn, you can feed it through the orifice onto your bobbin. And you do it all over again. You don't want the loops to be too close to each other because then you'll have more bumps in your yarn. You kind of want it to be a seamless transaction. <laughs> so you can see that it's created a three ply or the illusion of a three ply. Um, and there's not too many bumps in the joints. We'll put an adding twist to our yarn, feeding it in and repeating the same steps. I've been doing three loops for each, uh, each advance basically. Um, but whatever you feel comfortable, if you have longer arms, you might be able to do more. What we're going to see soon is the color change in the yarn. So that's the big part about why, why we're doing this. Um, so you don't get much barber pulling or you don't get, um, you know, crazy variegated yarn. What we're going to have is a gradient, which is what we were going for. So another part, important thing to keep in mind is the tension you have on your bobbin. So when I spin fiber, I you generally spin in a more worsted way, so I'm feeding my fiber into the wheel. But this is more similar to a long draw. So there's we're not containing the twist in any other way than just where the loop is formed. So as you twist, I'm keeping pressure on this hand back here that's letting this twist build up. And then once I feel like there's a sufficient amount of twist, I loosen the pressure on this hand, on this arm, and you can see it, the line goes slack, uh, so it can be picked up by my bobbin. Because if you hold it taut, it's just gonna keep twisting and twisting and your wheel isn't gonna pick it up. The other thing is making sure your tension is right on the bobbin. Uh, so usually I keep it at the lowest tension possible. That lets me 
add more twist into the yarn without it yanking it out of my hand. So we're still on the pink. It's transitioning a little bit to a darker pink slash brown, which is cool. It's nice to see the color change in action. And if you look, you can see how it looks like a three ply. And you can see where the three ply comes from. So we have the yarn that we're putting through the loop and then our loop has two sides. So one, two, three. So as we pull it through, it, they go back on themselves and create a three ply. So as, I, as you're spinning, there is active twist in your single, which is, you know, what we did earlier. And then what can happen when you're chain plying is these, the yarn can, your single can twist back on itself. And, and because it's wool and it's grippy and it likes to make friends with each other, uh, it can get stuck. So you, when you get a little over twisted area, just gently pull it out so you don't break your yarn. Remove the twist from that yarn. See, it's wind over a twist. I pulled it taut and then just continue chain plying. But you want to make sure you get that little over twist taken out because it'll cause a bump in your yarn. Going slow while you're doing this, especially getting started, is the best way to go. I've watched videos where people are looping while treadling, and you know, it goes faster, but it's easier to control what you're doing if you, you stop. It's almost like parking, like you would on a drop spindle. As you're going along and you're getting comfortable, you wanna make sure your hands stay in the same position, because you wanna make sure you're pulling your thread or your pl single ply through your loop the same way. That'll keep your yarn consistent the whole time. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting right now. So what happens or what to do when your yarn breaks? So there's two places it can break. It could break in the loop or it could break uh, in the single over here. Um, so I'm gonna break it myself just to show you guys. So when the when the single breaks you have two this is where the the break was and so we're going to want to overlap it on itself in that same area so you could also knot it but then you would have a knot in your yarn i think this is a cleaner way to join it again so we still have our loop our hands in our loop and we're going to twist we're going to start treadling and I overlapped it about two inches. So in the point where you've overlapped it, you're gonna use that middle area where the two uh, threads are overlapping and you're gonna pull that through your loop, just like you would if it wasn't broken. So I still have my fingers on where the break is. And so now my finger is on the, the break still, so it's keeping it together and you can loop it together and the twist just brings it back together. So it's all about the twist and making sure you've added twist to where that break is. And you could just keep going. So similar to when the single breaks, when the loop breaks, and I'm gonna do it even though I don't want to, but I'm gonna do it to show you. So you break you break your loop by accident. So your pointer finger and your thumb are gonna be your best friends here because it's gonna hold your twist, your, your ends together. And there's two ways. If you can get twist added into this while still pulling through your single to have an addition, another loop, then that's ideal. But sometimes you have to join it in unconventional ways. So. You could use a glass of water, get your fingers wet. Basically, we just want to join these two. And it's like wet felting. Um, friction and water will felt, you know, generally felt most wool. So I'm going to wet my finger and twist. Okay. 
you're still gonna add twist to it. Ooh, that didn't work. You're still gonna add twist to it afterwards, so you just need to get it to join enough to get your single through there. Just to be safe, I'm still gonna keep my fingers pinched on that area, but it's not generally gonna, it's not gonna fall apart, or it shouldn't. So, keeping those fingers pinched on that spot, using some hand dexterity, you'll wanna pull through, and before you pull through again, get your twist added in there, because that'll lock it. And then you can keep going. And you've seen as we've been spinning, the colors change in the yarn. And it's not a drastic change, it's not an instant blue to orange to pink to, you know, brown. There's no orange in this, but you know what I mean. Um, what we're seeing is more of an ombre effect, a, gradu a gradient, which is what we're trying to achieve. Um, but it's, it's a nice soft transition. When you spin in the fractal way where you're ripping apart and, and manipulating what your yarn's gonna look like, that has a little bit more barber pulling because you do a two ply instead of a chain ply. So your colors may never match up or they, you know, there'll be spots where there'll be two colors barber pulling. This can happen, that can happen sometimes with chain plying just because of the way the colors change. Um, but generally it's gonna give you a more uh, gradient than a stripe. As you can see, I didn't load the bobbin great, but the yarn is pretty chunky. So depending on how big your single is when you start is gonna dictate how big your your chain ply is gonna be. Um, Cause it's gonna triple your single. So as you're spinning, if you get thin areas and thick areas, that's great. You're just gonna have a more textured yarn. Um, if you want your yarn to be all the same size, you have to make sure your singles are as consistent as possible. Um, mine were a little all over the place, so I have some fun bumpy yarns and some thinner areas, but I like that. Uh, I like the texture. Now that you get the hang of it, you have your full bobbin of your single spun yarn still, and you just keep on going. Um, and when you get to the end, you just add some twist into it, and I usually will add some extra twist just to keep it, you know, together, and you're good to go. You can remove it off the bobbin from a nitty knotty or a skein winder, but it should be a somewhat balanced yarn. You shouldn't have to be fighting it um, when you're taking it off the bobbin. But yeah, so that's chain plying. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can give us a call. You can email us in. Hopefully that was clear. <laughs>